Good morning Saints, we're looking at the lectionary readings today which come from Psalm 148 and uh, then we go into the New Testament, we've got uh, Revelations 21, we've got uh, Acts 11 and uh, also John's Gospel finally, chapter 13 verses 31 to 35. Um, obviously it starts off today with the Psalm, uh, Psalm 148, praising the Lord, everything uh, in the psalm is about praising, it's praising God's creation, it's praising everything about God um, and, and his creation in, in all aspects. And then we come into the New Testament and we look at um, Revelation and we see how uh, there is going to be a new creation that God is going to recreate. So the old things are going to pass away, the, the heaven and earth that we know is going to pass away. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, somewhere where there's going to be no more tears, no more crying, no more pain, no more suffering. This is going to be a phenomenal place and uh, this is what we're looking at in the terms of creation and new creation that God is capable of doing. At the same time we know that he creates and recreates in us too. He called a nation for himself, the Jewish nation, and uh, he created a people for himself. And we know too that there will be the new Jerusalem that will come down from heaven, which will be the new created order, which will be both Jew and Gentile. So there is a, a sense, and when we go into Acts, we see how through Peter, um, the Lord actually brought new people into his uh, family in the sense that he was with the Jews his, this was his chosen people the Jewish people and suddenly we find that Peter uh, has a vision from God and that there is now another created order coming in that the gospel is now open to the Gentiles as well as the Jewish people and then we go into John's gospel and we find that Jesus has just literally been um, washing his disciples' feet, washing his friends' feet, including Judas. And he has uh, then celebrated the Passover. He has identified his, his betrayer with, with Judas. And then he goes on to give them a new commandment. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's just come back, step back just a, a fraction and go back to uh, Revelation, for example where we know that there is going to be this new Jerusalem, there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and that there is going to be a new creation in, in the person that God calls into his kingdom, that there is going to be a, an aspect where we are new creatures, we become new creations through the power of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we become new creations and therefore we have become part of his recreated order. And it says in there that we will become sons of God, and that anyone who thirsts will be given the fountain of life. So we know that this is something new. This is something wonderful and new that God has prepared for us, and uh, Jesus said that he's gone to prepare a place for us. Um, so we know very, very clearly that this is something very, very powerful and positive about our future, but it also means that something changes in us today. Something is recreated in us. Um, in, in normal terms, in worldly terms, we have no real love for other people, not really. We are very selfish, we are self-made, self-worth uh, people, and what happens is that when God does a work in us and makes us a new creature, he says, if, you, if I can't wash you, then you have no part with me. And so he, he starts off by washing his disciples' feet. He shows them that he is a servant, that he has come in humility to serve mankind. And he gives us that as an example as how we should be with our brothers and sisters, that we should be servants, that we should be prepared to serve, even to the point where Jesus gave up his life for the church in the same way that we have to uh, be prepared to serve and give up our lives in service, to become bread broken for the people, to become Eucharist to the people. We become disciples of Jesus and followers of Jesus and we carry on the example of Jesus. This is our this is our future, this is our 
whole point and purpose of being alive is to serve God by serving people, by loving people. And so Jesus shows us that by washing the disciples' feet. And when they say, oh no, you don't wash my feet, you know, you are much greater than I, he says, no, unless I can wash you, you have no part with me. And that's obviously something about the, the Eucharist is involved in that as well, in the, in the blood, the blood, the shed blood of Christ. It's not just um, dealing with sin, but actually washing us so that we no longer want to follow the world, that we become part of the kingdom of God and want to follow God and want to do what's right. So we have a, a new heart, a new attitude, and therefore through that new creation, that new washing um, that we have that cleanses us and makes us new this is where we can then have a new attitude to each other last week we looked at the fact that the week before he was saying do you love me well now he's saying something else now he's saying I want you to love your brothers and sisters I want you to realize there is a now a new commandment and the new commandment is that I want you to love one another just as I've loved you and so that's the question today. That's what's really um, in front of us today. Is do we really love one another? Do we really love one another the way God wants us to? Do we love one another in a humble way, in a spirit of humility, in a spirit of submission, in a spirit of service? Do we love one another so that we would want to serve one another? Or are we still trying to be selfish in our love for one another? Because that's not real love. That's not the kind of love that God wants us to have for one another. When we only love people uh, because they love us, God says that's, that's, not, that's not the kind of love that I'm talking about. When he says, I want you to love one another, he wants us to love people even when they don't love us. And when we think about it, think about what Jesus did when he washed the disciples' feet. He knew who his betrayer was, and he washed his feet. And when he was on the cross, he said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. You cannot have a root of bitterness in your heart and love other people. And that's what Jesus showed us on by going to the cross and being on the cross. He showed us that we must not have that bitter root, that resentment or hatred of other people, that there should be real love, that there should be real forgiveness going on, and that through that, we can really show that we are disciples of Jesus. He says, you will show your disciples by your love for one another. And that's what we have to do today. We have to show the world, show everyone, through our love for one another, that we really truly are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, our most high God, and that we have become part of the family of God. We are brothers and sisters with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ because Christ loved us so much and showed us how to love, taught us how to love and showed us that we need to love in a new in different way, a new created order of love has been shown us and given us. That's what today is all about. It's all about creation and recreation and a new created order, new commands, new understanding of what God really is all about and what we should be about as Christian people. God bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen.